a stranger arrived in Ifrite. Ego Yibo. Adama, the mysterious child. In the hearts of African savannah, where Iroko trees stood tall, and the sun cast golden light over the land, lay the village of Ifite. Life in Ifite was lively, filled with <laughs> sounds of laughter, music, and drumming during celebrations. But under this happy surface, lay a mist of superstitions and old belief. At the edge of this village, near the thick forest, lived a thin and weak young girl named Adama. Adama looked very different from the other village children. Her skin was pale. Her eyes seemed too big for her thin face which was often hidden by messy hair. Her looks and shy nature made her an easy target for the <laughs> village's fair. Rumors spread about Adama calling her a witch who brought bad luck wherever she went. They blamed every small misfortune and every illness on her. To them, Adama was an outcast to be avoided. One day, as the sun was high and bright, a stranger arrived in Ifrite. A Goyibo, a kind-hearted woman, known for her compassion and wisdom, came from a nearby village. She was a healer, known for helping both physical and emotional wounds. Her arrival brought hope and curiosity among the villagers. Ego Yibo's heart went out to Adama the moment she saw her. There was something in Adama's eyes, a deep sadness and longing. Ego Yibo could see beyond the thin frame and haunted looks. She saw a child in need of love and care. Who is this child? Ego Yibo asked a villager. She's Adama, a cursed child, a witch. Best to stay away from her, the villager said with a dismissive wave. Ego Yibo's heart ached at these words. Without hesitation, she went to Adama, who was sitting alone under a tree, holding a ragged doll. Hello, Adama, Ego Yibo said softly, kneeling beside her. My name is Ego Yibo. How are you doing today? Adama looked up, surprised and scared. No one had spoken to her so kindly before. She didn't know what to say. Ego Yibo smiled warmly. Would you like to come with me? I can help you. Adama hesitated, but something in Ego Yibo's gentle manner reassured her. She nodded slowly, and Ego Yibo extended her hand. Together, they walked back to Ego Yibo's small hut at the edge of the village. Ego Yibo's home was simple but welcoming, with colorful fabrics and fragrant herbs hanging from the ceiling. It was a place of healing, filled with warmth and kindness. Over the next few weeks, Ego Yibo cared for Adama like she was her own daughter. She provided nourishing meals, bathed her with herbal infusions, and gave her clean clothes. Under Ego Yibo's care, Adama began to change. Her pale skin became healthier 
and her eyes sparkled with life. She gained strength and hope she had never known. Ego Yibo also taught her to read and write and shared stories of courage and resilience. Adama's laughter, once rare, now filled the heart. She began to explore the world around her with curiosity and joy, no longer weighed down by fear and isolation. As Adama flourished, the villagers noticed the change in her. Whispers of witchcraft turned into astonishment at her transformation. Some were still wary, but others were intrigued and started to question their beliefs. One day, while Adama was fetching water from the village stream, she saw a group of village children playing nearby. They had always avoided her before, but now they watched her with curiosity. Adama felt a bit scared, but also hopeful. She smiled at them tentatively. To her surprise, one of the children, a boy named Obina, approached her. Do you want to play with us? He asked, a bit hesitant but sincere. Adama's heart soared. She had liked that. She replied, yes, smiling. From that day on, Adama began to make friends with other children. They played together, shared stories, and learned from each other. The walls of isolation around Adama started to fall, replaced by bonds of friendship and acceptance. As the season changed, Adama's beauty and grace became more apparent. She was no longer the thin girl the villagers had once shunned, but a radiant young woman. Her transformation did not go unnoticed by the royal family who often visited the village. One day, during a village celebration, Prince Arize, the heir to the throne, arrived with his entourage. He was noble and a kind prince, loved by all for his wisdom and fairness. As he mingled with the villagers, his eyes fell upon Adama, who was helping to serve food at the feast. Prince Arise was struck by her beauty and the kindness around her. He approached her, curious to know more about the girl who had captured his attention. Hello, I am Arise, he said with a warm smile. May I know your name? Adama blushed. Her heart pounded. My name is Adama, she replied softly. Arize was intrigued by her modesty and grace. It's a pleasure to meet you, Adama. Would you join me for a walk? Arize asked. Adama nodded, and together, they walked through the village, talking about their lives and their dreams. Arinze was captivated by Adama's intelligence, kindness, and the strength she had shown in overcoming her past. He admired her resilience and the way she changed her life with Egoibo's help. Over the next few months, Arinze and Adama spent more time together. They shared their hopes and dreams, and a deep bond formed between them. Arise found comfort in Adama's presence, and Adama felt a sense of belonging she had never known. Their love grew much to the delight of Ego Ibo and the villagers who had come to respect and admire Adama. 
the prince's affection for Adama helped to further dispel the lingering fears that she had once surrounded herself with. One evening, as the sun set over the savannah, casting a warm glow over the village, Arise took Adama's hand and led her to a quiet spot by the village river. The water sparkled in the fading light, creating a magical atmosphere. Adama, Arinze said, his voice filled with emotion. You have brought so much joy and light into my life. I cannot imagine my future without you. Will you please marry me? Tears of joy and happiness filled Adama's eyes as she nodded. Yes, Arinze, I will marry you. The news of their engagement spread quickly, filling the village with excitement and joy. The royal family welcomed Adama with their open arms, recognizing the strength and the beauty of her spirit. Preparation for their wedding began and the entire village joined in the celebration. On the day of the wedding, Adama was a vision of beauty in her traditional attire, adorned with intricate beadwork and colorful fabrics. Arisa stood by her side with eyes filled with love and admiration. The ceremony was a grand affair, attended by dignitaries from neighboring villages and beyond. As they exchanged their vows, Adama felt a deep sense of gratitude for the journey that had brought her into this moment. She looked at Ego Ibo, who stood nearby, her eyes shining with pride and gratitude to God. Do you know that Kwashioko is a severe malnutrition condition caused by a lack of protein despite sufficient calorie intake it primarily affects young children in developing regions leading to symptoms like edema and large liver tightening hair skin lesions and apathy Nutritional rehabilitation phase. First, begin with low protein, low lactose diet using therapeutic food formulas. Then, transition to higher protein diet. Also, include supplements with essential vitamins and minerals. Ensure continued access to balanced protein-rich foods. Also, regularly monitor growth and development in the patient. Thanks for watching. Love from the Classic Stories.